the Lord. Hallelujah. We're still going to spend a few minutes praying. Just asking the Lord to send a fresh rain. In every season, you don't depend on last year's rain for this year's harvest. Every season has rain that comes. It rained last year, but we still need rain this year. If at all, we must plant. You're going to pray. Pray in the spirit passionately and desperately. Father, a fresh rain upon my life, upon my destiny. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No matter how skillful the potter is, the malleability of the clay is what determines the extent of the beautiful sculpture that will be made out of it. Are we together? There are times that the potter would be trying to form something and because of a defect in the clay he will squeeze everything and smash it again the assignment of the clay is to trust what the potter is building are we together father in this encounter tonight change me lift me radically transform my life please lift your voice and pray don't look around pray pray I come as the clay. 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 Malibu. I come as the clay. Shapakata maroto soto pretegete. Pepepeke barakato soto barato. I bring my ministry as a clay. I bring my finances as a clay. I bring my destiny as a clay. Maker of men, make me. Maker of destiny, make me. By the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of your word. <laughs> Ipeteka tapaka tosu pregeni. Ipeteka tapaka tosu pregeni. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One last prayer point and we'll sit down. Acts chapter 3 from verse 4. The Bible says how that Peter and John were on their way to go for prayer. And they met this man who was sitting by the beautiful gate. He had been there a long time. And then the Bible says, And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Your own assignment is look on us. He was looking at them already. The second time we see this kind of expression in scripture, the first time was Elisha and Elijah, if you can see me. So he's not talking about just a natural looking. There is a looking that is just physical, but there is a looking that is, is a seeing in the spirit. An expression of hunger, help them please, and desperation from your spirit man. Verse 5. The Bible says, and he gave heed. This is what the looking is. To look does not mean to see. To look means to give heed, expecting to receive. Verse 5 broadened what verse 4 was saying. So when he says, look on us, he's not just saying, see. He's saying, give heed and let your spirit be ready to receive. This is what Elisha told Elijah. Elijah told Elisha, if you can see me, if you can give heed, expecting to receive. To look is not just to see. You are already looking. But to look, verse 5 gave us the interpretation. Give heed. Pay attention. Open up your spirit. Expecting to receive. Are you ready to pray this prayer? So when the Bible says looking unto Jesus, now you know what he's saying. He's not just saying just take your eyes. No. Give heed. Expecting to receive. Are you ready to pray? Father, I fix my eyes, the eyes of my heart, the eyes of my mind on you, on your word. I expect to receive, I expect to be transformed. Lift your voice and pray. Shala barantos kodo barantos. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everybody. It's good to be here with us again. Every moment in God's presence is a moment of encounter. Please pay attention. Listening inside all the overflows, following online. They go from strength to strength. As many as appear before the Lord in Zion. If it is the God of the Bible you meet, you go from strength to strength. Spiritual strength, mental strength, capacity, superior levels of the anointing upon your life. Are we blessed? So the next few minutes, we are still going to pray later on. But please, I'd like you to be seated. You see, every time you come to the house of God, the Bible lets us know that anywhere the word is, Satan is also within that vicinity. The parable of the sower. As soon as the seed was sown, Satan himself, not a demon, he came and carried that seed. It is such people that are ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. The goal of light, illumination, 
the bible says neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but if it is a candle they put it on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the room meditate on these things paul was telling his son in the gospel timothy he says give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear unto all are we blessed please be seated god bless you appreciate every one of you it's always a joy to be in the house of the lord hallelujah only only god in heaven can tell the degree to which my heart burns and my heart desires to see every one of us here rise to the fullness of our spiritual potential and the fullness of our destinies in Christ. More than advancement in ministry, more than the excelling of an individual, it is a desire and a passion in my heart to see that by the grace of God, everyone with no limitation whatsoever, that we are able to rise as individuals and corporately as a family of faith to a higher level in the spirit. Not just in terms of our spirit work alone, primarily so, but that it extends to every facet of our life. A life of excellence. To excel means to advance. To excel means to do well. Are we together? The greatest need, write this down please. The greatest need of an unsaved person is salvation. The moment you meet someone who is not born again, has never had an encounter with Jesus, that person does not necessarily need prosperity. That person does not necessarily need miracle signs and wonders. He can be healed. He can prosper. But the primary need of an unsaved person is salvation. An encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the epistle of John. This is the record, he said, that God had given us eternal life. Listen carefully. But he constructed the administration of this life such that you must encounter the Son before you have the life. That means when you say you have the life of God, we will vet whether you have encountered the Son. If you have not encountered the Son, it is not God's life. So, the greatest need of an unbeliever, an unsaved person, is salvation. But the greatest need of a saved person is transformation. Please follow the sequence. An unsaved person is dead spiritually. Attempting to bring spiritual transformation is a waste of time. At best, he may contend for secular transformation from a philosophical standpoint. Because the Bible says, the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit, neither can he receive them. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. He says, awake unto righteousness. That means a man who is unsaved is dead. No matter what you tell him, he will laugh at spiritual things. They don't make sense to him. But the greatest need of a believer, one who has met Jesus, is transformation. And can I tell you, that is probably, uh, do I call it the hardest assignment? But it is one of the most difficult assignments for the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Not because he's incapacitated, but the, the difficulty in yielding our mental faculties to allow the Spirit of God do this laborious work of editing. Don't forget that we are loyal to our beliefs. We have obtained some results with them. So there is an emotional connection to our beliefs. This was what you believed all your life growing up. Conditioned environmentally. Now the word of God is proposing a superior idea. That means that you will have to give up literally for many people. It's like giving up everything again. How many of you have seen some of our parents or maybe for some of you here there's something about your first house your first phone your first car your first anything is that true 
there is that connection it was the first symbol of progress in your life so you are connected to it so you see that a man owns estates but there's something about that first house there's something about that first car dilapidated but he still forces it to be useful he may have other cars but there he is your dad or mom or whoever still on that car and they may not leave that car even if they don't use it again they will keep it as a, mon a, a monument there is a memorial there is a history attached to it this is how it is the bank of information that is in our hearts we have been so emotionally connected to it that when the holy ghost comes he presents the word and he says there are options life death there are options blessing cursing i gave you a will so i cannot force you but here is my option choose life choose life does not mean choose to be alive alone choose life means a life of excellence a life that is able to reflect the grace the power the love the wisdom the whole the entire dimensions of god but you can allow death to continue the greatest need i repeat of the saved person the believer is transformation what is transformation the name given to the experience that makes you like christ the journey that makes you like christ experientially in his entirety is called transformation transformation is not just a change of mental state no it's more than that transformation is a journey it's not just an encounter it's a journey it takes a very long time a journey that gradually begins to translate you by the introduction of new and superior spiritual ideas to your life. You are not transformed just because another information is coming to your mind. You are transformed to the degree to which you have new and superior spiritual ideas. Is God helping us? So the need for the unsaved person is salvation. Don't forget this. These are basics of the kingdom. The moment you see someone who is not saved, no matter what you give or say or do to that person, you have not really helped that person if you don't introduce that person to Jesus. The greatest need of the unsaved person. This is discipleship now. The greatest need of the unsaved person is salvation. It's not the only need. What is the greatest need the greatest need of the believer who is now saved is transformation why because an heir as long as he's a child the bible says he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all an heir one who is a benefactor of an inheritance provided that person is still a child and he um first corinthians 13 tells us the three qualities of childishness when i was a child number one i spoke like a child number two i understood like a child number three i acted like a child so how do you know children in the kingdom by their speaking by their understanding and by the way they act the way they act is invariably the way they think their convictions So when we say you are a child in the spirit the bible there's no confusion about it the bible gave us exact parameters we know that you have attained maturity in the spirit when your words begin to be cultured why because now out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks you have been mentored into understanding that the word of a king has power that our speaking in this kingdom has a prophetic implication whether you know it or not whether you believe it or not is a fact is a reality to the point that jesus himself calls himself the word if jesus calls himself the word then that means words and speakings are powerful are we together so when i was a child i spoke like a child how do you speak like a child you speak words that are not full of faith you speak words that are not consistent with the revelations that are given in scripture words that are largely sociological listen let me tell you this when you are mentored and discipled 
you are excelling in that mentorship to the degree to which your words begin to line up with the character of scripture this is not just some pentecostal thing there are many believers for many years when you meet them they still speak the way they've always spoken and they say don't mind all these things people just say and we keep programming death the realm of the spirit does not care whether you are joking or not the moment there are words it is authorized to honor it he says say not before an angel i made a mistake because they have an assignment to execute the things you have said by thy words you are justified are we following tonight and by thy words you are condemned now the thing is that you may not see the effect immediately but it does not mean it is not adding up 10 years of careless speaking 10 years of non-spiritual speaking 10 years of speaking outside of scripture and you see that your life begins to nose dive because it will follow the direction of your speaking i guarantee you jesus whilst he was preparing to die notice his focus was not gentlemen i am dying no he kept saying he will resurrect he kept telling them if he did not say it you will be surprised that he will be captured and trapped in Hades there and not be able to come up because he was speaking as a man even though he was the word of God now look at me believers in a bid to step into what we call maturity and contend for what we have known to be weightier things in the spirit we ignore some of these things in our minds and in the folly and the pride of men we think these things are basic they are for children let's contend for things maybe about prayer about fasting let's go into deeper dimensions and we ignore the things everybody knows as architects foundation is very important because the strength of your structure even according to scripture not just architecture scripture two men built nothing was wrong with their building the problem was the foundation one built on a rock are we together the other built on sand the same thing happened to both buildings the one that was built on sand not with sand all were built with sand but one was built on the rock they all fell when i was a child i spoke like a child spoke like a child said all kinds of things oh my life is miserable and you laugh it over and you think just because you have been born again for 10 years the realm of the spirit will excuse careless speaking no we have brought ills over many 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 years accumulations of ill speakings vain gistings and in the midst of it, we, we curse ourselves with words and we do not know. Are we blessed? Again, the greatest need of the unbeliever is salvation. An encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. He needs to understand the gospel. He needs to understand the value of the gospel to his eternal destiny first and then to his excelling in this life here and now. That's his greatest need. The greatest need for one who is saved is to attain unto superior transformation. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2. I beseech thee, brethren, it says, by the mercies of God, that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. It calls it your reasonable act of worship or service. Verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. The thinking pattern that comes with this age aeon it says but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 says let this mind be in you Philippians 2 verse 5 let this mind the word let means permit let this mind is your responsibility to cooperate with the holy ghost and the word let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus he did not just excel there was a level of transformation that was with him and in him when satan came to him in matthew chapter 4 turn these stones into bread the word of god the wisdom of god was there to shield him his response 
have you forgotten i am god that's not what he said it is written that's how you know people who have grown in the spirit remember we are looking on to jesus so the degree to which you have grown is the degree to which most of what comes out if not all is it is written when your life becomes revolves around it is written then you are growing So my assignment is to speak consistent with what the word of God says. It doesn't matter what your life looks like. And it does not. Listen, listen. You don't speak just to agree with the situation. The situation must agree with what you are saying. Because what you are saying is more superior to the situation. That's the spirit of faith. Are we together now? We all have in the same spirit of faith. The Bible says, as it is written, I believed and therefore I have spoken. We believe now, therefore we speak. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. There are many people who laughed and scorned at speaking correctly. Their lives are in shambles today. Many people. Some of you have colleagues. Some of you have classmates. Primary school, secondary school, university. When they saw you zealous speaking right, they laughed and said, These Pentecostals. Look at the timeline now. Most of them, their lives are miserable. Their lives have become what they kept saying. They were laughing. You remember the foolish man who laughed at the word of God when he said, By this time, the word of the prophet now, by this time tomorrow over Samaria, and the one who the king leaned on said, Even if God will open the windows of heaven, shall these things be? Listen carefully. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. Number two, I understood like a child. Understanding is a real miracle. I've taught you this. Your degree of comprehension, the ability to know the systemic nature of the kingdom and to know how to engage the word of God profitably. The Bible says that the word of Christ should dwell in us richly in all wisdom. Not just richly, carelessly. Richly in all wisdom. Is God helping us tonight? So you know that you are attaining maturity to the degree to which your understanding becomes superior. Question, what do you know about God? What do you know about the devil? What do you know about yourself? What do you know about life? What do you know about failure? What do you know about success? Everybody say understanding. What do you know about the power of God? What do you know about the word of God? These are, these, are, these are realities you cannot toy with. Your destiny is a function of all these aforementioned things. It matters what you know about God. It matters what you know about the devil. It matters what you know about yourself. It matters what you know about failure. Because you'll be confronted with it many times in your lifetime. It matters what you know about success. It matters what you know about the word of God. This is the manual for profitable living. This is the modus operandi of the kingdom. What do you know about the Holy Spirit? What do you know about the anointing of the Holy Ghost? These are kingdom principles. If you do not have understanding of these things, I tell you sincerely, you will live a defeated life. It's a matter of time. You will keep convincing yourself, don't worry, things will be alright. Until you find out you are 50, you are 60, you are 70, and you will painfully have to come to a point of admittance that I didn't get this right. I understood like a child. How do children understand? Children live in disjointed realities. One of the proofs of children is that there is no sequential arrangement of their knowledge because it's not educated knowledge. 
is just a freelance knowledge by observation. Their knowledge is not methodical. So when the Bible says, I understood like a child, that means there is no sequence and there is no methodical approach to your understanding. The day you hear someone talking about salvation, then you pay attention, get a piece of truth from it. Then you hear that they are baptizing people in the Holy Ghost. Then you get a piece of truth. You are understanding like a child. When you come to a point of maturity, you settle down and understand faith thoroughly. You understand the Holy Spirit thoroughly. You understand the devil thoroughly. You understand the ways of God thoroughly. On the strength of that knowledge, there are some things the devil cannot bring in your life again. Are we together? I understood like a child. I understood like a child. This is how people rise in this kingdom. My dear people, listen to me. Every one of us here has a great destiny in Christ. The Bible says we have been called with a high calling. Nobody has been called to a life of mediocrity and failure. No, we have been called corporately to be witnesses, advancing the purposes of the kingdom and finding fulfillment while serving the purposes of God. Away with that gospel that ignores the dimension of your life that finds fulfillment. Jesus said, my meat. That means I derive satisfaction in what I'm doing. I'm not just obeying the Father alone. I'm finding fulfillment in what I'm doing. Obedience is powerful, but it's not enough. There must be fulfillment in what you are doing. And fulfillment is based on progress. The key to fulfillment is progress. You can never truly live the fulfilled life if you are not making progress. Rigma rolling around dimensions, thinking you are moving, but you add up your life and nothing is adding. Are we together? It is dangerous that you get to a point where the only thing growing in your life is your age. You've heard me say it. Birthday after birthday, nothing is moving. You're not advancing spiritually. Your life is not blessing people. You're not finding fulfillment. Dreams and visions you've written, none of them has ever found fruition. I will do it. I know that things will work out. No. The unit of destiny is time. The Bible says to redeem the time because the days... Are evil and our advancement in this kingdom is based on our level of transformation the greatest need of the unbeliever is salvation the greatest need of the believer is transformation the greatest need of the transformed believer is empowerment when a believer is transformed he has the requisite belief system to excel Except for the fact that our world is not just a philosophical world. It takes more than the wisdom of superior ideas to reign. Now that ye know these things, the Bible says, happy are you if you do them. It's one thing to know. It's another thing to be engraced to do it. Before 30, Jesus already knew by studies. But he could not begin his ministry. Except that he had an encounter with the Holy Ghost. Who came upon him. He returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. And Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 puts it beautifully. How God anointed this Jesus. This transformed Jesus. With the Holy Ghost. And with power. And he went about doing good. The dynamics of doing good. Is that you must be transformed. But you must also be empowered. This work that we do for the kingdom. This work that we do for our destinies, the labor in the spirit that we exert for the sake of kingdom come and for the sake of our lives, we cannot achieve it entirely in the strength of the flesh. There is a place for intellect, there is a place for the mind, but there is a space only the Holy Ghost and His anointing can occupy and then it will produce miracles, signs and wonders in the life of a believer. If you are unsaved, your need is salvation. If you are saved, your need is transformation. How does that come about? Transformation comes by inculcating superior belief systems that are consistent with scripture. And that happens by the ministry of the Holy Ghost. He's the one who opens us to truth. 
I have many things to tell you, Jesus said, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Are we together? But when you now become a transformed believer, or to a large extent you have contended for transformation, it is painful to know so much and not have the grace to make it manifest. Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a performance. There should be a performance in your life. You should not learn about prosperity forever. You should not learn about healing forever. You should not learn about evangelism forever. A day must come in your life when you are empowered to demonstrate the things that you know. So when Jesus had this mentorship session with the disciples, after a while, he called them two by two. Are we still together? And he sends them. He said, do not go to the lost tribe of Israel. Um, do not go to uh, the Gentiles speaking, but you go to the Jews. That's what he was trying to say. They went and experimented what he said. They returned rejoicing and said, Ah, even the demons are subject to us in your name. He said, That's all right. There's still a lot more to learn. Your joy should not just be that demons were subject. Your joy should be that your names are written in heaven. Lecture continues. He was more passionate about the lecture to the point that when he resurrected, he did not even have the time to celebrate his resurrection. He called them. He said, Let's return back. In 50 days, the Holy Ghost is coming. I have 40 more days with you. When he was done, he looked at them. You have met me, a similitude of salvation. You have met my word, transformation. Now, the Holy Ghost is coming. He left them with him. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Bible says they were together in one accord. Suddenly, there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind. It came and filled the room. Those guys were not even ready for what was about to happen to them. Ordinary people, timid people, weak people, beggarly people. Supposed non-entities in society. But when the Holy Ghost came upon transformed minds, in one day, 3,000 souls. And when they gathered together and said, what is going on? Peter, he stood up and said, this is that. Is that when prophet Joel said so this is that you are the Holy Ghost come and have your way you are the Holy Ghost come and take your place There are three people here as I'm speaking now. The power of God is going to come upon them. I saw a very strong anointing. Please just bring them out here. You are the Holy Ghost. A man have your way. You are the Holy Ghost. Our lecture still continues. I just want to speak over their lives. Shalabarus yadabakata brandi gedi yadabak. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse. Please make sure you don't miss the miracle service tomorrow. You see, as God continues to grant us grace to grow in authority and grow in understanding, this is what spiritual growth is. As a man of God, people should never meet the same version of you twice. Never. That the same you they met is the same you they are meeting again. No upgrade in understanding. No upgrade in grace. Still functioning at the same spiritual level. No. Commanding the same level of power. It shouldn't be. It says grace and peace be multiplied. Grace and peace. You should be delving towards a place of mastery. Mastery that is provable. You are handling the things of the spirit now with such accuracy like the men of david they, once upon a time they were learning how to fight the knife will fall they will pick it 
but a time came they became the mighty men of david one man held the sword and did not he killed 800 people and put the sword down the sword refused to go down he had become one with the sword he had mastered the art of war I open, I'm seeing one of the families here. I'm seeing a gate that is closed. In the name of Jesus, I open that gate now. I open that gate now. It was the Lord that caused Moses and Aaron to advance. I declare that gate is open now. I use them as a point of contact to everyone here. I know that miracle service is tomorrow, but it starts now. That every gate that has been closed, over your life spiritually financially as god is opening these gates may those gates be opened now and the movement around your body that demonic movement around your body in the name of jesus christ every planting the bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father shall be uprooted we uproot it now the name of Jesus please be seated God bless you so the greatest need of the unbeliever follow me carefully is salvation the greatest need of one who is saved is transformation but the greatest need of the transformed believer is empowerment we downplay the place of empowerment because this is a world and a realm that thrives on intellectual prowess and many times we think just because we are not ignorant it means we have the ability to know knowledge is power that is true but knowledge without empowerment will not lead to execution of the things you know you will have an accumulation of correct information but your destiny will not bear witness of the things you know. There are many of us that know so much. Many people are better teachers than better res than result producers. You can teach so many things. When it has to do with articulating the things you know, you are almost flawless. But the results that come from what you know, the missing link is genuine empowerment somewhere in the equation of your success you have ignored the ministry of the holy spirit are we together i have seen many well-meaning people preachers businessmen students a generation of people some of you ministers of the gospel there are some of you who are here the truth is you have listened to people's messages from man of God to man of God. You are not in ignorance. But what is the missing link? Why are you unable to produce the result? Did the sons of the prophets not hear Elijah? They were with Elijah. They were already being transformed. But none of them could produce the result. Out of all those sons, only one. The one who followed and paid attention. And said it's not just information I'm looking for. There must be the grace. He said you are following me this far. Between transformation and empowerment, there is Jordan. Between transformation and empowerment, can you cross Jordan? You can listen to a man of God's tapes. You can follow the teachings online. That's powerful. You will get transformation. But it will take more than just hearing. It will even take more than just sitting in the atmosphere where things are happening. The sons of the prophet were students of Elijah. But out of all of them, only one. A double portion of your anointing. He said, you have asked a hard thing. However, if you can see me, Acts chapter 3 verse 5. I've given you the formula. If you can see me. Listen. 
if you are not empowered you will see your destiny this close and yet never enter it you will see it visions and dreams many of you have notebooks full of encounters full of visions you are not in ignorance many things god keeps telling you and god keeps repeating it every year a new year and he repeats the same thing hoping that this will be the year you will be empowered to do it empowerment is powerful empowerment is more than oil we have idolized things like oil and all of these things now i told you oil does not anoint oil only anoints if an anointed person anoints the oil oil can fry egg can fry yam can fry all these things it came from a tree it's olive the empowerment dimension is where most people have missed it as many as believed him even to those who received him he gave them it's not just information he gave them alone there is power to become power to become Power to become a man of God. Power to become a true prophet. Power to become a financial apostle. Power to become a leader. It takes more than desire. There is power to become. Do you have the power to become? He gave them power to become. Power to become is Saul also one of the prophets he was not born a prophet what suddenly happened he encountered a prophet that gave him the power to become this politician you were born nobody was supposed to vote for you but you went to a herbalist should I contest or not the herbalist gave him an information but he said hold on don't just go like that take the power to become many people do not have the power to become they have the power to stay and be transformed but they do not have the power to become are we together we have many mothers in this ministry and they will tell you there is power to carry a child are we together for nine months you are carrying the child it's not easy but god is granting you grace but then there is the power to push until that child comes out you see that you see how delicate it is at the point of delivery they will not say you've been nine months pregnant you should be an expert by now there are midwives there are people watching sometimes there are machines trying to induce all kinds of things power Then there are times that some women are carrying twins, triplets, quadruplets. The kind of attention given there will not be the same as someone carrying one. Power to become. It's true that God has told you great things. It's true that you are in a season that you know is a defining moment in ministry, in finances, in family. My question is having encounter jesus for your salvation the holy ghost and the word for your transformation so far have you obtained the power to become power to become or do you just have an idea on how to become do you just have an idea on how to do ministry apostle i've read about ministry i've read about homiletics um every kind of thing you know christology pneumatology i've studied everything i've learned church administration i understand i've listened to this you have done well i commend you but do you have the power to become the feast was prepared in scripture i'm hurrying up because we're going to pray the feast was prepared in scripture and he said go and call people to come and eat one said i just married i need time with my wife Another one said, I just bought a cow, I just built a house. And he said, no. Go and compel them. He gave them an ability. He said, you went just with desire. 
that's why they are not listening to you now go with desire plus this power it's called anakazo the compelling power of the spirit go to the byways he says and the highways compel them to come that my house shall be filled there was an ability upon noah and his ark that suddenly made the animals no matter if you were an animal that day you must come to that ark the animals did not just come because they didn't know where to go there was power that brought them that is the power that when it comes upon you it does not just draw animals alone it draws finances when it comes upon you it draws favor please understand what i'm telling you these are the systems of the kingdom it is this power upon you that turns you to no longer be a normal human being it is still flesh and blood but it is not flesh and blood again there are bodies terrestrial there are bodies celestial what is the difference the level of transformation spiritual illumination and then the investment of the holy spirit he comes to sit upon your life I'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me yeah. Are listening to me and you are not saved no matter what else you have you have not attended to your greatest need your greatest need is salvation you are saved listen look at me you're a man of god here or you are listening following online let me challenge you the primary assignment of the minister of the minister of the gospel as far as building believers or as far as church growth is concerned is not only salvation but discipleship without discipleship believers cannot mature discipleship is not inculcating a denomination's perspective no discipleship is the system of mentorship you use the course content called doctrine to mentor believers a methodical approach to spiritual growth there are many ways to learn how to drive. You can steal a car and quickly be, you know, when your parents go out, you carry the car and freelance. That is, that is a back door way to drive. There will be many side effects. You can move the car, but you will know the things you don't know the day you enter the road. But there's someone who will go to maybe a school of driving. Are we together? Yes. And be taught properly. Sometimes the person who even goes to the school of driving, he already can drive. So he will go with pride. And the first lecture will humble him. They will not even talk about driving. The first lecture, they will talk about the territory where he is first. And he will feel bad for his friend who is moving around believing he's an expert driver. There are many expert drivers that were not taught well. They drove well for 10 years. And the mistake they did not learn killed them in the 11th year. This is how many believers are. You can sit on your own and learn anything you want to learn. Oh, I saw this book by Gloria Copeland. God's will is prosperity. I've learned it. Beautiful. Now I know everything about prosperity. They didn't tell you there are attacks that come with every realm. They didn't tell you that money, this money you see, there is a spirit behind it. If a circumcision has not happened to you, it will tear you into pieces. Then you find one book on prayer and fasting. I'm not saying these things are wrong. But you just, while you are studying on prosperity, you just halt and just look to three or four pages on prayer and fasting. Then you learn something. Then you listen to a sermon. You stumble across a sermon on YouTube about maybe spiritual growth. And then maybe you attend a conference somewhere. And after five years, you stand and say, I'm mature. Do you know something about finance? Yes. Do you know something about character? Yes. Do you know something about spiritual growth? Yes. And you dare to tread, you step in, believing you are equipped. That's when you will see the gaps in your knowledge. When demons look at you, you are full of zeal with gaps. Gaps everywhere that can be used against you. 
but when he builds you karus kali paratus yadaka when he builds you you will be so formidable the bible says listen to me the bible says that barak was called listen to me that he was called to go and cause um what was that what was that scripture now numbers right yes to go and cause the nation of israel and they saw a formation in the midst of them the ark being at the center and they did not have to go and say you are causing us you keep doing what you are doing our focus is our own formation and he cost and cost and cost and said this is not possible because the shout of a king is in the midst of them there is a way your life can be so full of the glory and the grace of god you will live as if you are not a normal human being on earth you see if you don't contend for transformation and empowerment you may never understand these dimensions and you will not appreciate them you will not even believe they exist you will just think this is just church pentecostals talking nonsense There is no other way to excel in this kingdom. What I am sharing with you is not an opinion. God made it possible for all of us to have Bibles. Look at me. You know, sometimes we men of God, sometimes we talk and act as though God called us in private and just gave us something that can never be available. The scripture is there and that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation that means the truth of the kingdom can be found in scripture your prosperity your increase every question you truly ask and desire an answer for there can be an answer in scripture for it why am i not making progress there is an answer why am i not excelling there is an answer why is my knowledge of god unfruitful there is an answer but the seed for an answer is a question it is only he that seeks that finds listen you can continue to allow your days to just leave itself like kicking a car putting it on gear and allow it to drive itself hoping that one day your life will drive itself into a beautiful prophetic destiny or you can make up your mind tonight to take responsibility there is a relationship between authority and responsibility and say i'm going to drive my life with intention and not feel guilty while you are laboriously studying the various facets of life and the kingdom that will make you excel because sometimes you can be studying on finances for instance and people and your sociological context can make you feel guilty there are many more serious things to study why what are you doing with issue of finance that may be where you are with the holy ghost but society can make you feel guilty and you give up on it and say let me just focus on prayer or this no no every dimension of the kingdom required for your growth is important you ignore it you will pay for it when i started out with god because of the dramatic nature of my call and the way god started out with me we didn't pay attention to other things other administration excellence finance no 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 no. it was the holy ghost in fact it was purpose i started out with purpose Dr. Miles Monroe, purpose, thoroughly understood purpose. How that you serve your generation with the gift that God has given you. In your gift is your prosperity. In your gift is your relevance. In your gift is your fulfillment. Ah, I learned that from him. Then came this series of encounters by the Holy Ghost. I did not leave the issue of purpose. But I just stayed and it was like a well that I could never exhaust. What is this new dimension? Visions, encounters, angels, revelations of scripture. But then I remember, I was so, I was so much in it. Had God left me that way, I would be suffering today. Because I would stay there the way I was so into this thing. I'm not sure that I had interest to look at any other aspect. I didn't believe, based on my encounter, that there would be need to study any other aspect. Because it looked real. It looked like once you have him, you have everything. I was right, but I was wrong. 
it was the Holy Ghost himself who gave me a vision this was 2007 I had an encounter and then he opened me to other dimensions and said in as much as the richness of my encounter is there but there are other the systemic nature a human body if you study only the digestive system there are other systems and they all are important to make that organism function well and then I painfully began to open up to other aspects I felt guilty especially aspects of finance I felt carnal I felt unserious what is all this thing now I just felt that I need the richness of my fellowship where that cloud of his glory would come and cover me what is all these pointless things and then to make matters worse the books I bought on finance I thought they would just tell me the business they were doing to prosper straight to the point they were talking about mindsets behavior I said you people are wicked and evil people just tell us what you are doing how foolish I was I didn't know that success is not what you pursue is what you attract by who you become they were teaching how to become and I was rejecting it and yet intending to become but thank God for the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost stayed there God is delivering someone right now because God is telling you you have three years left to your time of manifestation and there are many other dimensions you have not learned it is two years left before the work of ministry God gave you you are about to start hold on please help them please you have your timing spiritually but there are other aspects you have not learned do you know prayer yes sir do you know how to fast yes sir do you know fasting yes sir what else nothing else ah, you must contend with speed with the holy ghost to learn these other aspects what else was jesus teaching them they had lectures every day and yet when he resurrected he said guys i'm not done with you even though jesus was a lecturer he knew that there were other things they had not learned so you carry that lopsided knowledge and start a ministry and because of miracles watch this and prophecy you find out that fire is falling everyone is coming oh there's a new man of god in town signs and wonders are happening because you see everything new people like it whether they don't believe it they just come to watch what's going on here and so you think they are coming means they are going to stay they will just come and look around oh i hear that there's a new man of god there's this there's that going on and then you are happy believing that everything is done <laughs> And then the moment the ministry starts increasing, now the question of leadership comes in. You go back to your archives. You were not there when the Holy Ghost was teaching on leadership. Now you are confused. You don't know what to do. What of administration? It's not part of my lecture. You ignored it. You laughed at those who carried that grace. Now where you use your room, your house, outside is too small. You need to go and rent a venue. And they tell you you pay well i don't maybe maybe it's, it's not very much but i'm just giving an example and you find out that even probably you were working and all your salary for five years will not pay that place for one year you go back to the holy ghost you are still anointed though but the lectures you ignored is now telling on you you didn't learn how to balance ministry and your children and after five months of ministry, you find out that you've not even seen your children. Your family is going down while you are preaching. Because these other aspects you were not taught. Now, psychophants begin to come to the ministry. And you have not been trained in discernment to identify them. Attacks begin to come on account of the word and the mantle you have. If you are Elijah, get ready for Jezebel. She will come. Then you do not know how anointed people sustain their fire because you only learned how the anointing comes you don't let you didn't learn how it is maintained you were focused on how it comes so you got it but how is it maintained and you find out that you are feeling as if you are sick you go to the hospital they say nothing is wrong 
and yet you know you are not fine what is the name of what is wrong with me by that time you're already a general overseer you don't know what to do you travel for three ministrations and fall on the stage there because you don't know that there is a technique to maintaining this grace look at what was on moses one man had that spirit and yet he was quiet part of it fell on 70 people none of them could stand from morning till night yet that all of that was in one man oh i want to be anointed are you sure do you want that grace do you have that grace the greatest need of an empowered believer is character and humility the greatest need of an empowered believer is character and humility because when you are truly empowered when you are truly anointed by God and of God the temptation that you will face is the temptation of pride it does not happen because you are a bad person that's why he gave them a warning let it not be that when you have built houses when you have built houses when everything is working well for you you will say my power and the might of my hand has given me this but thou shall remember success is very delicate when you know you are truly anointed one time i was going to please help them i was going to minister somewhere and um you know i, I remember a few years ago and generally i like the strings just being you know just something just being played lightly while and ministering it's, it's just a pattern nothing it can be done with or without so someone was trying to call my attention to say look the sound system there is not very good or there's no keyboard how will you do and I looked at the person I was almost saying mr. man I was trained well oh you go and sit down in the meeting and just wait and see what God does it was such a dramatic meeting it was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in such a way no instruments no nothing and the guy said he thought that it was just because of this thing i said is it an idol what of the people who see me at home and fall down what is being played there none of us is born this way it is contending for mastery that brings you to this realm however when you are unsaved it is salvation you need when you are saved it is transformation through mentorship through discipleship when you are transformed it is empowerment you need to live out that which you know serving the purposes of the kingdom with it and then excelling in your own life but when you are empowered be warned you would think that i would not say anything after that uh -uh. let me tell you how it works when you are empowered you need humility serious humility and you need character that is when you will spend the rest of your life consistently in self-examination character is god talking to someone right now invitations are already increasing for you it started like trickles of rain once a year twice a year now while you are sitting maybe your phone is ringing man of god woman of god can you come and bless us aha uh -huh. the temptation of the great is already coming close to you you must know how master the art of holding on to the four horns of the altar master it fast because a time will come you are the only one who have to supervise yourself on that wise and can I tell you this? The moment you have all of that, the cycle is recycled again. You come back to crying for the Jesus you met afresh as if you never knew him. 
It's a cycle. Oh. By the time you are empowered and you are excelling, it will be like, what else is there? Let me tell you what else is there. He is Alpha, but not Alpha alone. Find a way of still making him Omega. Go back to him again and say, Jesus, I am here again as I came when I wanted you at first. I have come to know you more. It starts with Jesus. It ends with Jesus. It does not start with Jesus and end with transformation. It does not start with Jesus and end with empowerment. Are we learning something now? Because every one of us here is part of this cycle somewhere. If you are not born again, I'll soon be making an altar call. Get ready to run and come and stand here. Salvation. If you are born again but you are not growing, a harvest can rot when it's not preserved. This is the challenge with church. We go on crusades. We save people. Hundreds of people. When they come, they come with flesh. They come in with everything and there is no room for growth because they are not discipled, they are not mentored. So they stay there and keep causing trouble because a harvest that is not preserved will rot. When it rots, it smells. When it smells, others are affected. Don't save people and just pile them at the gate of the kingdom. Immediately, the work of transformation begins. I was teaching the school of ministry in Abuja, the students yesterday, and we're looking at the pattern for salvation i'm not here to talk about that tonight but for many people they have deviated in the pattern go and read your bible it was always salvation the baptism salvation the baptism that's what you see in the book of acts salvation the baptism acts chapter 2 salvation the baptism acts chapter 8 philip in samaria salvation the baptism Acts chapter 9, Saul of Tarsus, salvation, the baptism. Acts chapter 19, salvation, the baptism. We have deviated from that pattern. That's why many, many people are not strong. We just get people born again and there is no system to administer the baptism. Either because it has not been taught or those who are the leaders within those spiritual circles do not show the people the need for it. If you can pray in tongues, that's all right. Nobody, congratulations. If you cannot, one day God will bless you. No, it is a pattern. Give us Acts chapter 8. Let's look at, let's just look at it quickly. And then we'll pray. Is God helping us tonight? Acts chapter 8. Uh, let's look at verse 5. I'm trying to... Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. Look up please everyone. And Philip, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. What was the foundation? Christ. He preached Christ, not just miracles. Are you seeing now? We have to be careful what we tell unbelievers. It is not miracles that save. It is not prosperity that saves. There is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved. And the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Uh -huh. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. Next verse. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man, oh dear, let's go to verse 11. I just want to jump for time's sake. Verse 11. Okay, let me just read. And to them they had regard because this and that, a man with sorceries. Verse 12, let's read on. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women now in scripture when you hear that one was baptized into the name of the lord that is salvation are we together another expression for salvation is to be baptized in the name of the lord it's an act of immersion comes from the word baptizo to be partially or totally immersed in a fluid so that they don't see you again you are now completely immersed verse 14 now listen carefully so we start with philip preaching in samaria are we still together preaching christ and they saw signs and wonders 
They gave their lives to Jesus. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Uh -huh. Look at the pattern. Who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive what? They were saved, but they had not received the Holy Ghost. Look at the experience. This is the pattern. Verse 16. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only were they baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Next verse. Then laid they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 19 from verse 1. Let's just use two witnesses in scripture. It came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, disciples, that means they were saved. Are we together? Disciples. Next verse. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Are you seeing the pattern? When you believe, the next experience is to receive the Holy Ghost. They said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. So the problem was the person who was mentoring them. He did not teach them that there was more. Next verse. And he said unto them, unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism. Here was the correction now. Paul said, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him that is on jesus christ when they had this they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus christ verse 6 and when paul had laid his hands on them the holy ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied last verse and all the men were about 12. salvation baptism salvation baptism why because the coming of the holy ghost is the lecturer arriving he is the chief lecturer all of us are only co-laborers we are we are we are do i call it assistance now but he's the one who leads he's the captain of that transformation system but many believers come you see how people even give their lives to christ Lord Jesus, they are laughing, they are pinching one another. Some even come when they are saying Amen. As they are saying Amen, that's when they come and then they clap for them. They say, all of you go this way or go back to your seat. And the person goes back. He was not saved. No, he was not saved. Salvation, then transformation. From transformation, then empowerment. From empowerment, you must balance your empowerment with humility. Why? Because humility is the key for multiplication of grace. As it is written, he resisted the proud. Apostle James taught us. But he gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, the Bible says, and he will exalt you in due season. Are we together? And then when that happens, it looks like you have arrived. In this kingdom we never arrive you go back you are my alpha you are omega you are Yahweh you are Yahweh you are Yahweh you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh. Alpha and Omega. One more time. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega, you are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. Let's sit down. Every
every one of you under the sound of my voice within this auditorium outside and those following online I just showed you somewhere in this equation where you are there are those who are not saved your need is salvation there are those who are saved but you are just sitting there in complete ignorance Sunday after Sunday midweek service prayer meeting conference convention but there is no growth your need as a saved believer is to now begin to journey with the Holy Ghost and it can start this night spirit of the living God I'm ready to start this journey this journey of transformation some of you come from churches and backgrounds where respectfully speaking you didn't have the opportunity for superior levels of discipleship a methodical approach to your spiritual growth you should don't feel embarrassed the men of God did the best they knew to do but now you see the need for it because your destiny is time tagged and the time allotted for your transformation for many of you is almost getting exhausted the time for manifestation is close yet you are behind in your lecture behind what do you do when you are behind this is a place full of institutions you fix extra classes that's the way you catch up is that true oh yes extra classes if you meet only once a week for someone who is in time and on time that's fine but to someone who is behind it was destined that by age 29 25 35 you should already be at the cutting edge of god's purposes for your life now you are 30 35 40 25 23 and you are behind and the holy ghost is showing you according to that divine clock is two years left and yet the healing anointing is not yet in your life yes there are souls tied to your obedience and to that grace you still are at the periphery of understanding the prophetic you have still not understood the apostolic you've still not understood signs and wonders you still not understood the dynamics of intercession you've not understood what it means to be an apostle in the marketplace spoon feeding with one five minutes something in the morning oh i read my bible today and god is saying no no destiny is calling that means you must create extra time with god look at all the activities in your life now draw a graph activity versus result you will find out that over 60 percent of what we do are useless as far as destiny is concerned don't be afraid to cut them out and give god that time and say holy ghost let's hurry up because in life at the end of your life you will not do more than five or six things i assure you as busy as you look now as the busiest people on earth they don't do more than three or four things all these activities is a satanic way of distracting our generation this is one of the most distracted generation we are busy we wake up in the morning we sleep late in the night there is no productivity you gist and gossip for five hours that's your destiny counting then you sleep for 10 hours not as a reward for anything you did then you don't learn you now say i'm supposed to watch two videos while you go on youtube suddenly you find out there's one joke or something and you start watching and before you know it it's two hours you are just laughing away and time is going and the holy ghost keeps nudging you many of you know what i'm telling you the holy ghost has been talking to you young lady don't allow people to die because of your slow pace there are people you are to finance until now you've not even handled things around finances there are crusades it was testing that it's your resources that will finance them tonight is a wake-up call playing playing games with destiny playing games with god's purposes you must fold it now it doesn't matter what church you come from it does not matter what age you must be about there is always there is a project if you are unsaved your project is to meet jesus apostle i came to receive miracles thank god you will get it but the, your greatest need 
more than education, more than marriage, more than children, more than career, more than job, more than promotion. The greatest need of any unbeliever is an encounter with Jesus. No matter what else you have, if you have not had this encounter, there is still trouble. Are you learning now? So you see, as a believer, you know how to help people. When you see people, you can discern their level and know how to help them. Communicate the highest priority for them. When someone is saved and you look at him, the next thing you should be looking at for is, le is level of transformation. And you find out you've been saved. When? I was saved 1991. Wow. Instead of dashing the person in shoe or dashing the person material, to say look finer and greater is wonderful but can i recommend some messages you want to give that person a birthday gift more than clothes go and get a flash help the person and arrange messages mental transformation finances spiritual growth give him as a birthday gift heaven will bless you you have moved that person's life forward then intercede for the person to take that flash dive seriously I'm showing you how to help people. Some of these mundane things we do and we waste time around. Someday that trumpet will sound, whether we're ready or not. I assure you. Let there be a sense of urgency in your life. Do you know the thing about destiny? Come, gentlemen. These guys, everybody's destiny has another person connected to it if these guys were destined by God to move forward based on my apostleship and I fail I did not just fail two destinies have suffered because I did not go forward the question is who right now in this May is suffering because of your not praying forget about yourself who has gone to the grave today because your prophetic grace is not sharp enough Which family is suffering now? Because according to the archives of the spirit, it was you that was allotted their salvation and their deliverance tied to you. The sense of urgency that the king's business requires haste. There are some of us after this lecture tonight, you should make up your mind. Go and sit down. Buy a new notebook. Spiritual growth. Get a ruler. Mental transformation. Finances. Relationships. Empowerment. Begin to study them. Come up with a timetable and discipline yourself. Obtain grace. I must watch a video concerning spiritual growth. I must watch a material that will transform my mind. What are you doing now? No job. What are you doing? I'm in a process of transformation. You would die there or the person lied. The person lied a thousand times. Content for transformation. And you are already on your way getting closer to empowerment. Empowerment is useless when it comes to a mind that is not transformed. This is where we have a lot of reckless use of the anointing. I'm saying it with every sense of responsibility. There are many young men and women scattered across the body of Christ, recklessly misusing the anointing. You know why? Because they were not discipled before they were empowered. They just brought seeds and met us men of God. Just because the person got born again and started prophesying does not mean he's a prophet. He must sit down in the school of the spirit to be mentored. Let me tell you this. Listen to me. Dear spiritual leaders, no matter how charismatic the, the experience of any new convert is, he must sit down in the school of the spirit and learn doctrine to be able to administer the gift and the grace of God to him well. This premature exaltation of people because of a flamboyant gift is why we keep having casualties. Are we blessed? Yes. So just because someone found himself to start prophesying, now, nobody can talk to him. A service can be going on like this, for instance, and you just stand up. I have a word from God. And just because some of the words are accurate, now no, everybody's afraid. Nobody wants to stop him. 
Sit down. Are you the first to prophesy? You sit down and learn doctrine. The ability to discipline your gift is proof that you will last with it. If you are here and you are already misbehaving on account of spiritual gift, don't feel condemned. This is the heart of a father talking to you. Obtain grace to go back because you are closer to deception. If you have gift without the word, you will not know when you've gone out of the boundary of scripture. So we promote people, we ordain people, we exalt people, and you find out that everybody continues to be a student in the school of the spirit. But there is a level of maturity through the communication of doctrine. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I understood like a child. I acted like a child. And then, when you find out that you have contended for transformation, you will know that your seasons of appearance is coming because God begins to give you opportunities. They will come as trickles. Lead prayer here. Do this here. You may get a job with people of influence. It's not about the job. It's that God told you you are Esther in the making. God told you you are Joseph, you are Daniel in the making. So he's using the job as a springboard to take you there. Look beyond the salary. You must understand relationships. Be fruitful means be relational. You're a businessman. Don't just learn how to produce things. You must learn how to replenish. The security of wealth is in that one word. Replenish. The ability to make what is depleted to come back again until the harvest and the seed time meet themselves in your life then you end the reign of poverty and lack forever and you can now be a blessing to others are you ready to pray our time is gone but we'll take a few minutes i want us to flog it out with destiny as we pray I came with a burden. It's a miracle service. But more than that, my dear people, listen to me. I desire God sees my heart. How that every time I pray for us, my desire and my longing is to see that we come into a point of power with God. Maturity and understanding. Where the doctrines of scripture are not, we are not confused over them. Koinonia is a global family. Whether I'm in Abuja or I'm here or I'm in US or UK or anywhere across, it doesn't mean anything to me. It's the same people. When a father is visiting his child who is in US or who is in America or who is anywhere, they are all his children. There's none of his business whether, whether or whatever. No. When I come to Zaria or when I'm in Abuja or when I'm in anywhere, Provided is the spiritual family that God has committed, my passion remains the same. There is no difference as far as it's just it's just organization and expansion that makes it look that way. It doesn't mean anything to me at all. Whether I'm in Abuja, whether I'm in Zaria, whether I'm, no, no. The goal is greater than the location. Are you ready to pray? Salvation is like egg, the transformation of a, an insect. Transformation is like lava. Empowerment is like pupa. Character and um, humility is like being an adult. And then you recycle it back to him again. Jesus from the beginning Jesus at the apex of your life what happens when you've won the souls what happens when there are signs and wonders through your hands what happens when the crusades are jammed what happens when your bank account is full of money assets everywhere what happens when there are awards around your table testaments of your impact what happens when a generation says we love you you stand there with nothing else to do from beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. 
That's how men last. Oh, Jesus. Listen to me. Transformation is powerful, but it can become an idol. Empowerment is powerful. It can become an idol. Ministry can become an idol. Prosperity can become an idol. Titles can become an idol. Apostle Joshua Selman. Revelation can become an idol. Greek, Hebrew, Latin. The highest proof of transformation is not knowledge, it's love. The highest proof of spiritual maturity is not excellence in, in preaching, it's not efficiency in purpose, it's the health of your relationship with Jesus. And to pray. All of these dimensions, this will be your prayer request. Leave the one for tomorrow. You will bring it here and we will pray. But for now, I presume that many of us are saved. So your next prayer becomes the grace to contend for transformation. Then empowerment. Then character and humility. Then back to Jesus again. Please lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. Are you praying? Lord, I'm at a stage in my walk with you that I desperately need to begin the journey of transformation. Transformation through the ministry of the word. Transformation through the ministry of the spirit. An understanding of doctrine. An understanding of the principles of the kingdom. Some of you have walked with God a while. You need to contend for empowerment. Lord, I'm in a season of my life, in ministry, in career, in destiny. I require empowerment. Genuine grace from heaven. The power to be called. The power for exploits. The power to be called. The power for exploits. The power to be called. Power to become. Power for exploits. Hear me? And for some of us here, God has helped us in various ways. Koinonia is a coming together of several people. Heads of ministries, churches, prayer group leaders, different ministries here and there. You need to pray. Humility and character. Lord, let it remain with me. Let it be like goodness and mercy. Lift your voice and cry. Cry before the God of heaven. Humility. I conquer the temptation of pride. Humility and character. Humility and character. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the Holy Ghost is putting two prayer points in my spirit for us to pray. Two of them will pray it in one. The A part of the prayer. 
for someone here listening to me someone outside you're going to pray lord why am i here i'm tired of pretending like i know i'm tired of acting like i know my assignment is not just to come here just give birth just cool and go around lo i come he said in the volume of the book can i tell you this one of the secrets of frustration and hard high blood pressure among young people now doctor anointed is here there are many doctors here one of the reasons why many young people have high blood pressure is because you see there is frustration when there is stagnation in your life everybody finds fulfillment on the strength of progress are we together now it's a fundamental psychological requirement in men they need to know that their lives are counting they need to know their lives are making a difference a sense of destiny that's why when people find anything organized good or bad they want to be part of it whether it's a violence whether they want a sense of purpose even if it will just last one week nobody wants to live their lives knowing that they are just loitering around i live a very fulfilled life going to bed many times tired but happy and fulfilled waking up with joy in my heart because i know when you find your place in life it doesn't have to be ministry as we know but you must find your place in life you find tremendous joy and fulfillment in plenty or in little are we blessed lord why am i here i don't want to waste the remaining days in futility and then the b part listen to me some of you already have the universal picture i've done lots of teachings in time past what you call destiny or your assignment is broken into seasons with mandates attached to them every season has an emphasis the next prayer point for those of us who have a hold okay i know i'm in ministry i know i'm this some of you are serving in this ministry you are going to pray lord what is the assignment for the next season listen it is dangerous to not know when seasons have ended in your life you will be roaming around and yet a new door has opened lift your voice and pray these two prayer points an inquiry a search are you praying Oh, I pray, I pray in the name of Jesus. Reveal the blueprint of my destiny, the blueprint of my assignment, knowing also that my fulfillment is tied to it, my relevance in the kingdom is tied to it, my joy is tied to it. Show me, open up the blueprint of my destiny with precision and clarity. And then pray, Lord, this is a new season. Reveal to me. Show me the assignment. Show me my place for the new season. To him who sits on the road and on to the land. To him who sits on the road and on to the land. 
in and through my life. Jesus in the name of Jesus now please listen please listen I want you tonight to take this teaching as an assignment go and get a notebook and sit down with destiny get my teaching the last time I was here on decisions the Thursday before the miracle service you can get it immediately the media is there they can direct you give you the links and you can get it directly get it don't be lazy it's selfishness to be lazy get a notebook and sit down flog it out with destiny lord why am i here it's a question you must keep asking for everyone that asketh receiveth to him that seeks he will find and to him that knocks the door will be opened you do not know fulfillment till you find your place in destiny. Are we together? Tomorrow is a miracle service. Just a few hours away. Again, we are going to be giving God room to move upon our land in power and in grace. I'm so delighted coming here. Minister Prosper will be with us tomorrow. It's going to be an extensive time of worship. But listen to me. I want you to make this miracle service one of your most intentional one yet especially for the workers don't just plan holding cameras singing wonderful but I want you to go and sit down and think Lord I'm coming with hearts open remember Acts chapter 3 verse 5 4 and 5 let that be a scripture for you look on us means pay attention and be attentive expecting to receive come with your heart open write your prayer request with understanding and then come ready to receive come ready to be healed come ready to be changed invite everybody around you your loved ones who are far let them connect and then you can receive their prayer requests more importantly beyond the prayer request they need to hear you, you see what happened in in samaria seeing and hearing seeing and hearing faith comes by hearing if people just submit prayer requests alone and they don't hear they will not grow they will receive miracles they don't have the maturity and the understanding to maintain and they will be a burden to you because satan will keep coming to steal the word it's not fortified by knowledge are we together and then i want you to make a renewed commitment from tonight that you will be a student of scripture go and get the teachings there are so many teachings just from last year into this year if you sit with koinonia teachings from last year to this year sincerely they will transform you in ways that you will not imagine all the years are there but i mean most of them have been refined presented with greater understanding get some of the external ministrations they are there a data for next to nothing less than what some of us take in one day for a meal settle with the truth no excuses and be a student of scripture don't just listen while you are sleeping and you wake up no get up with a notebook and sit down as though a lecturer were teaching you your destiny is worth that sacrifice are we blessed so tomorrow what time tomorrow starts by five five on the dot by god's grace we're starting so that we can have the time to minister please come with your heart hungry and come with holy anger anger angry in your spirit lord this ought not to be so everything that is not a planting of god some of you are in ministry will be doing an impartation tomorrow come with your heart hungry and desperate lord there are graces i have seen but there are others i have not seen for some of you you may say that i need higher levels of the same grace come with your heart hungry Tomorrow is a feast of fastings, and the Lord will grant us that grace. But for tonight, let me quickly, please, no movement around. Let's just honor this. There are people here who are saying, Apostle, whilst hearing you, I could describe myself that I've not even started that journey. 
because I'm yet to make Jesus Lord of my life. You are outside Overflow 1, the Overflow there, following online, you are in here. Please, I'm going to count 1 to 3 just for sake of time. I want you to be very bold and intentional, or you are here, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Please leave your seat very quickly. Overflow 1 and the main auditorium, you can come out and stand here. Overflow 3, for sake of time, just move to your projector screen. Let's honor them as they take this bold step. Please stand up. Please stand up. Come, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever. Keep coming. I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. Gave your life to set me free. So I lift my hands to you. In honor I still believe there are a few more people the Holy Ghost is speaking to, to come and join. You are outside. Don't say we came in group. This is a personal affair. Win that war tonight. God bless you. I'm about to pray. You're joining them quickly. Come stand. Come stand. You're welcome. It's a family of faith that will always receive you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. A big thank you to all of you who are here. You have come as proof that you love Jesus. Rebels don't run away. Don't come to Jesus. They run away. So that you have come is proof that you are not a rebel. Young and old, the Lord bless you. Lift your right hand. Those at the odd overflow, lift your hands too. Likewise, those following online, watching from whatever platform and whatever device, you can just lift your hands to Jesus in the comfort of your home, your office, wherever you are following. And let's make this declaration with understanding. Jesus is here. Please repeat after me with understanding. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. And I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised up for my justification. Tonight, I declare that you are my Lord you are my savior you are my king i receive your life into my spirit and i receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and i declare that from today i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious people Thank you for the grace that saves. Thank you for the grace that builds. I commend them, O oh God, to the ministry of the word. I commend them to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I decree and declare that let this be the beginning of an experience that will lead to your maturity, your excelling in life. As you serve the purposes of the kingdom with your life, may you find joy, may you find relevance. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are blessed. You go from glory to glory and from grace to grace in jesus name i pray amen and amen god bless you now um there's a gentleman waving his hands there are some officials who will see you they'll hand over a card to you and just appraise you for a few minutes and you'll be back to your seat god bless you please all of you in concert celebrate them as they go overflow three just follow those leading you and those online you can let us know that you just met jesus god bless you are you celebrating them, Koinonia?